Welcome to another edition of Zazie TV. Hello Dr. Foggy Bottom. I am back for more information on these binary and organic compounds. What can I help you with? I noticed you brought some work. My instructor has this worksheet that gives us these ions, but I don't know what to do with them. Do you see the first line in your worksheet? The one that is colored? Yes. What does the instructor mean by those entries? The instructor gave you the ions she wants you to combine to make a neutral compound. In the first line, the line that is colored, she lists the example of a positive lithium ion and a negative fluoride ion. Because the compound is supposed to be neutral, you have to combine the ions based on their charges. Does that mean that if one ion has a single positive charge and the other ion has a single negative charge, they combine one to one? Yes, correct. You can see that your instructor, in her example, wrote the chemical formula for the compound as LIF, lithium fluoride. There are no subscripts on any of the elements in the formula. This means that the compound consists of one lithium ion and one fluoride ion. Okay, I kind of understand what to do with the example. When there is one negative charge, it will be able to neutralize one positive charge, and the resulting compound is neutral. I think that is what the instructor wanted. Yes, the goal is to make a neutral compound from the ions that your instructor lists in the worksheet. Alright, this seems easy, but what do I do with the other ions in the worksheet? You need to look at the charge of the individual ions. Charges are identified by a superscript. Do not get confused by the subscript. If you have polyatomic ions, you will also see subscripts. Subscripts indicate the number of atoms of a particular element in the ion. As an example, the polyatomic phosphate ion consists of one phosphorus atom and four oxygen atoms. This is indicated by the subscript of four. There also is a superscript on this ion, which is three minus. This means that the ion has three negative charges. They're marked in blue. Okay, I now know how to read the charges on an ion. You have to look at the superscript to figure out the number of charges on the ion. The phosphate ion has three negative charges. Yes, now let's look at how the ions combine. We will use the example of lithium ions combining with a phosphate ion. We will look at this more closely. Lithium has one positive charge and the phosphate ion has three negative charges. Therefore, to form a neutral compound, you will need the phosphate ion with its three negative charges and three lithium ions to contribute a total of three positive charges, one for each lithium ion. When they combine, you will have a neutral compound because the three negative charges are equal to the three positive charges. And when you look at the formula for lithium phosphate, you can see a subscript of three next to the lithium, which means that there are three lithium atoms in the compound. The subscript of 4 is for the 4 oxygens in the phosphate ion. What do I do when I have a positive ion that has more charges than the negative ion? Then you will need to combine them in a different ratio. Say you have a magnesium ion with two positive charges, and you want to combine that with a cyanide ion that has one negative charge. This time there is something special about the polyatomic ion. You need two of them to create a neutral compound. Anytime you have a polyatomic ion and you need more than one, you need to place the polyatomic ion inside parentheses and apply the subscript to the outside of the parentheses. Why can't I just write the two as a subscript behind the end? You mean like this? The reason why this is incorrect is because by putting the subscript next to the nitrogen, you change the polyatomic ion. Instead of containing only one nitrogen, the polyatomic ion now has two nitrogen. The correct way of writing it is to place the polyatomic ion in parentheses and then apply the subscript to the whole polyatomic ion. That way you do not change the ion, but the reader now knows that you need two cyanide ions. Here is another picture of the neutral compound that results from combining one magnesium ion with two cyanide ions. Oh, now I understand even better why you cannot write the formula as CN2. The molecule has two cyanide ions and the formula has to reflect it. I think I almost understand it all. I only have one more question. What happens when I have an ion that has two positive charges and combine that with a negative ion that also has two charges? 
Then the charges are equal and the ions combine one to one. Yes, but how do I write this? I mean with the parentheses and stuff. There is nothing special about that. We can use magnesium again and combine it with a sulfate ion which has two negative charges. Oh, so when there is only one polyatomic ion, you do not need to put in in parentheses? Correct. Chemists know all the polyatomic ions and treat them as if they were a simple ion and only put them in parentheses when there is more than one polyatomic ion in the compound. Thank you so much for your help with this assignment, Dr. Foggy Bottom. I was really stressing out over this. But now that you explained it to me, I think I will be fine on this worksheet. I am really glad I was able to help. There is only one more note. Sometimes students are tempted to overcombine the ions. That is because they learned a different approach from a previous chemistry class. You only need to determine a ratio for the ions that results in a neutral compound. That ratio should be the smallest possible number. Again, thank you so much for all your help. You are very welcome. This concludes Making of Binary and Organic Compounds, the second part to a two-part segment on binary and organic compounds. Thank you for watching.